Hello. I will be presenting Lewis Southworth, who lived from 1829 to 1917. Lewis Southworth was born on a plantation in Louisiana, and at the age of 16 was taken by his owner as the family server to Oregon, where the family settled. Less than a year later, the family moved to California to try their luck during the California Gold Rush. Louis played his fiddle outside taverns and restaurants, earning tips until he had earned enough, around $9,000, $23,000 now, I believe, to purchase his freedom from the family. He married and moved to Oregon on a plot of free land, moved back to Oregon. There he spent the next 10 years clearing the land, raising his family, and starting a town on the Alsea River. When he became too elderly to live and provide for himself, this is also after his wife had passed away and his kids had moved on, he moved to Eugene, and now his gravestone can be seen in a local cemetery. I chose Lewis Southworth to um, for my monument project because he was really one of the first, if not probably the first African-American freed slave who purchased his freedom to settle in Oregon and become uh, successful. Um, he wasn't a extremely successful businessman or anything like that, but he just um, really lived, uh, you know, a great domestic life by um, uh, their standards back then, um, and what really paved the way for so many African-Americans after him to settle in Oregon. Um, so, yeah. Site plan. This is my monument and site plan for Lewis Southworth. Lewis' statue sits at the entrance so it can be seen as soon as you enter. In one hand is his beloved fiddle, in the other his homemade shotgun. Stacked at his feet are, boxes, are books. Also at his feet is an axe, which he used to clear his land. He is dressed and has the stature of a hard-worked pioneer. Behind him on plaques are the names of other African Americans to settle in Oregon. This site would be surrounded by natural trees and landscape. In other words, ungroomed, just native organ planting. His statue is fairly easy to maintain, and the plaques and stumps behind him should be visible, but have the appearance of freshly cleared fields. The walkways around the site should be cleared and walkable. Overview of site. My design for this um, project um, was as such. I wanted Lewis to be sort of leading the um, other African Americans who have their names listed on those plaques, um, sort of have the feeling that he was leading them and clearing the way, uh, both literally and figuratively, for them. Um, as you can also see some stumps there. Um, now he obviously literally cleared land and started a township, but he also kind of paved the way and led the way as a pioneer of Oregon, um, uh, African American settler. So that's really the idea I wanted behind this. Side view. Lewis stands at seven feet tall. The plaques are raised about eight inches off the ground. <clears throat> The stumps are clearly chopped with an axe in different sizes, all being about a foot and a half tall. His fiddle. I put his beloved fiddle in his monument because it was really a changing point in his life. Without his fiddle, he wouldn't have been able to purchase his freedom. It was also a controversial object as he was not allowed to enter churches until he vowed to not play the fiddle. Many believe this was just an excuse to ban an African American from churches. Uh, this research was really one of the outstanding, um, most outstanding parts of his life, his fiddle was. Um, so that's not only why I have it alone in his um, left hand, but also um, as my first slide for the more detailed objects in here. It's probably the biggest part of his, um, not only his success, but his life. I found, found very few pictures of Lewis Southward, probably three total. Um, the most common one is the one that you can see on the first slide, um, where he's sitting with his fiddle. Um, but in the few pictures I could find, this is what he was wearing. It appears he's uh, wearing a vest and heavy cloth trousers. Here's his shotgun and books, and his, by his right foot and hand. First, the shotgun. He built this shotgun with old parts that he had purchased or found. 
Um, and also home forged parts, which he had either probably the butt was made, the butt of the shotgun was made out of wood that he had, you know, shaped or um, found. Um, he used it to hunt and provide and protect for his family. The books. He was a strong believer in fair education and even donated a large plot of land that he had cleared for a school and library. The top book is written and published by him. So, um, obviously another big factor in his life, uh, he wrote and published a book and it's, um, the title, you can't really see it here, but it's written on that book. Um, and I thought that was a fairly big point in his life, so I had to add that. His axe. His axe, which he used to clear land over ten years, lays at his feet. He would eventually donate the land that he cleared to a school in town, as well as a library. Um, not as big of a factor um, for him, um, um, but definitely, uh, I thought, should be incorporated. Behind him are the plaques reading the names of other African-American settlers in Oregon. There are also stumps, not only symbolizing the land cleared, but also showing that he cleared the way for other African-American settlers. So that's kind of um, saying what I already uh, mentioned. Location. The monument will be located on the Alsea River, just off the Alsea River Highway. This is the closest possible place for a monument like this to be placed near where he lived. Another smaller replica, like mine, could be placed in the Oregon History Museum, just to publicize the monument. I thought, um, you know, obviously this monument's uh, off the grid, kind of in a rural area, and um, so publicity might be a problem. But um, that's why I have the smaller replica in the Oregon History Museum, just to notify people, because... There's a fairly small chance that um, a large number of people who would be viewing this would just stumble across it on the Aussie River Highway. Thank you.